What's going on guys? Alex here with 814 EDC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Tuya Knives Mutt. So this is a knife I've had in for a few weeks now um, and this was sent to me directly from Dave over at Tuya Knives, uh, specifically Tuya Knives US. So huge shout out to Dave Warren um, for sending this my way. I basically reached out to him um, and I had seen this one come up and kind of getting teased on Instagram and I had reviewed I think I've reviewed four or five of their models before, um, previous to this knife. And uh, I actually have the Wraith in right now too as well. Phenomenal knife. But I emailed Dave and I was like, hey, like I, I really, really like your knife, or really, really like the upcoming model. Um, at, at the time, I didn't know what it was called. Uh, but I said like I, you know, basically had reviewed some of your knives before. Really, really enjoyed them. Uh, and this one looks super killer too. Like basically, would he, would he mind sending me a loaner? Um, and he replied back and basically said that I could have this knife um, to review it and stuff like that. So that was kind of blew me away. I was not expecting that. Um, you know, it's not every day I get sent stuff to review um, from, you know, makers and companies and stuff like that. So anytime I do get something given to me via them, um, it's always super, super humbling. And I always super appreciate it, you know, so, so much. Like I can't, I can't put it into words how much I appreciate it. So Dave, if you're watching this, thank you, buddy. Um, very, very kind of you. And the knife is awesome. I really, really love the knife. And I, I'm not saying that just because, you know, he gave it to me for free and so on and so forth. I'm not trying to be, you know, a shill, but I really try to nitpick on this knife and to see if there were things on it that I didn't like. And there's nothing like this is just a, for me, a fantastic knife, fantastic size, great materials, and a very, very competitive price point that I think you guys are going to really, really like and enjoy if you are not super familiar with Tuya or the Mutt model in general. Um, yeah, it's just really, really fantastic. Really, the last couple knives from Tuya have been absolute bangers. Um, the Caledon was very cool, which is a um, Jim, Jim Skelton design, OEM'd by Tuya. And uh, what was the one before that? Oh, the MVV4, love the MVV4. It was fantastic, really, really good. Then you have the Mutt, then like I said, I have the Wraith, so be on the lookout for a four view on that, probably within the next week or so. It's really, really good. And all their models come in at a very competitive price point, which again, or again, I always say that, but you guys will know, I always talk about that at the end of the knife, at the end of the, knife, at the, end of the video. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get started with this, jumping right into materials. I don't know what that noise was. I think my fiance's in the shower. I don't know if, sometimes the water pipes in this apartment make some odd noises and I um, still get you know kind of surprised by them every once in a while. But starting off with the obvious, you know, thing that kind of stands out right away are these inserts. So these are fat carbon inserts on both sides. This is, I believe, some sort of variation of toxic storm fat carbon. You can see the yellows and the greens and the blacks kind of swirled out through there. Another the really cool thing is um, it's double-sided. A lot of knives, you only get fat carbon on one side, but Tuya, with a lot of their models, you get it on both sides, which is very, very cool. You know, definitely worth the money, in my opinion. Um, something else that's really cool about this specific model is the designer, of course, is Dave Warren and Colin Mason Pierre, which his logo is right there. Which you guys know, Colin has his own designs with Kubi, and um, um, he has one with Beztech, and some um, other ones that are you know littered throughout the knife space as well. And he is half of the brain, or half of the the brain guy behind, um, or brain guys behind Devo Knives with Kevin over at Left EDC. So they teamed up and made the mutt which is very, very cool. But something that I really wanted to highlight is the shield, which I took the shield and these lines, which is kind of an ode to a traditional style knife, which is really cool. I really like how they included that. Just that added touch is, you know, kind of just makes the knife feel different, feel more premium. Um, overall, I, I really liked how they did that. There are three different variations of fat carbon on here. So they have this one with the yellow and the green. They have just more of a um, uh, jungle wear, I believe, is green, just fat carbon. And they also have a nebula fat carbon, which is red, white, and blue. And I think that my favorite might be the nebula, um, but I would say this is a very close second because just because I like the contrasting differences, that's a word, um, between the yellow and the green. And I really like, like I said, the lines and just overall, the like everything looks very, very good. Sorry about that, guys. My fiance was indeed in the shower. Um, she had to come in here after she got done 
she uses these closets here. Uh, she needed an outfit for some errands. She's running with her sister. Uh, so I had to let her, you know, do that and get ready and stuff like that. And uh, she's now gone so I can finish the video. And uh, yeah, so I was talking, I think about the um, materials on this knife and specifically about the shield and the lines and how they based off of, you know, traditional models and stuff like that and put it into a more up, you know, up to date, upscale, more modern design with modern materials. And that's really, really cool. I really enjoy how they did that. Of course, you have a titanium backspacer back here, mill titanium pot clip that is righty only. You cannot switch it, which is kind of a bummer, but you know, not the end of the world. And it's a nice aesthetic as well as a nice carry clip as well. Um, frame or sorry, uh, bolster lock. I almost lost my train of thought there. Um, flipper tab up here. You do have a hole for deployment on both sides. Beautiful Warncliffe style blade, more, eh, sheep's foot Warncliffe, um, has a little bit of both in it, nice thin belly, there's your blade stock, and on this side is nothing, a sterile blade, and then over here you have DW for Dave Warren, you have CM for Colin Mason Pierre, or CM Knife Designs, and then you also have S90V as the blade steel right there. So overall, very, very handsome looking knife. Uh, we'll give you guys a few specs on it. So the blade is three inches, so right in that sweet spot for me personally. Um, I love that size of blade. S90V, which is a fantastic production blade steel, I feel like is just now being used more. Uh, I know Tuya has been very, very consistent with using it on a lot of their new models. Uh, this has it, the Wraith has it, the Kaladin had it or has it, and um, the NVV4 has it as well. So that's really cool because I feel like S90V is... A really really good steel has very good edge retention um, but it's just not used a ton it's not used as much as 20 cv and m390 and stuff like that and that's no shame on you know those steels at all because i love those steels i have plenty of knives in those steels but it's just really cool to see s90v kind of be used a little bit more and uh more prominently prominently with production style knives um so it's very very cool with a 60 to 62 hrc four inch handle, so that leaves a seven inch overall length on the mutt. Weighs in at only 3.3 ounces. Um, that's one thing I forgot to mention was there is no internal milling. Um, so for it to be right around three ounces without having that added help of internal milling, that's very, very solid. Um, I really, really like that. Um, on the inside of the backspacer, it does uh, have a number on there. So it's numbered, which is cool. Tuya, um, and this is 87 out of 107. I, you guys might be able to pick that up right there. Um, I think each run was right around 100 knives from my understanding. Um, so yeah, so that's all for materials. We're going to jump into action next. Now with the action, there are multiple deployment methods. So you have a flipper tab up here with jimping. You have a hole for deployment. So you can thumb flick, middle finger flick and slow roll um, and index finger flick and pinky finger flick and whatever it is you do. But there are a lot of different ways to deploy this knife. Um, so we're going to start off with a simple one. You can slow roll it. Now it is a little bit kind of cumbersome just with how the hole is shaped. You kind of have to shove your thumb in there to get it to work out. Um, but you definitely can do it. Not the end of the world. Um, you can thumb flick it, which I'm not a huge fan of. I think I've talked about this before in plenty of, plenty of my different videos before. I'm not a huge fan of thumb flicking when the hole is, you know, long and sort of narrow. I like having a hole. Uh, like a spider co hole for thumb flicking the best. You're just able to get your thumb in there and have a little bit more clearance to fire out. And it just feels awkward because you have to like either do what I just did there and kind of fly off of the, the uh, hole or you kind of have to push out and around. And I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I definitely don't thumb flick this knife that often. Middle finger flick is where it's at. Just bangs right out of there. Detent is not the strongest I've ever felt before, but for this knife and for this size, it suits it very, very well. I like it quite a bit. Flies right out of there. If you guys can hear that, it is our, um, we're watching my in-laws dog for the week, Sophie. They are in Europe for um, like a work trip and stuff like that. So I'm watching, uh, my fiance and I are watching Sophie for the day and, uh, or not for the day. I can't talk today, guys. I'm sorry. We were watching her for like two weeks and uh, my fiance just left and she's, I think, sitting at the door 
whining. Um, so hopefully she comes here and hops up on the bed. But uh, I tried calling her name, but you know how dogs can be and whatnot. So uh, the thumb flick, middle finger flick. Now for the push button, which I definitely prefer as opposed to the light switch. Um, it just feels more natural to kind of land right, right on top of the, the uh, flipper tab just to build pressure and it pops right out as opposed to using a light switch method where you kind of start up here and then draw it down. You can do that. I just don't prefer to. Um, I definitely like, like I said, building the pressure, you know, popping right out. And I really just, it feels unnatural to like drag your finger along and uh, do that method. Uh, but the detent works very well for both of them, which is awesome. That's kind of a, a sensitive subject when it comes to knives with holes and either holes or thumb studs with a flipper tab. And sometimes when you even added a front flipper, that's another wrench in the monkey in the wrench, wrench in the monkey, something like that. Um, it's hard to have a detent that is tuned for all your deployment methods, but with the mutt, it definitely is very snappy on the middle finger flick and on the flipper tab as well. Um, so that's definitely a round of applause to Tuya for tuning it and for producing, you know, having good quality control and uh, making sure that both deployment methods are um, you know, easy to use and suitable for the fidget monsters that consume these types of knives, uh, myself included. So uh, now for the drop factor, you of course have a bolster lock, which I love bolster locks. Um, to me, they're like the best of both worlds between a liner lock and a um, frame lock. Really, really enjoy them. But a lot of the times you drop, hit your nail, then you either shake it down or you can drop, hit your nail, one shake it's down. Or one thing I've noticed is you can drop it, your thumb down lower and then it drops down. You just have to be careful of it maybe coming down and catching your cuticle because I have had that happen a few, you know, a few times. But if you can kind of play with the knife and get used to where your thumb needs to go for that to drop down past the flipper tab. Um, I didn't get it there, but came down there in there um you can definitely get to it and then i like to do the old i think kevin actually showed me that's one of his lives um it's a way to close it left-handed where you kind of just do it get out of your way with the pointer finger drops and then shake it it's very very fun as well you kind of get into a rhythm with that um but overall action is is very very good on this knife 10 out of 10 would recommend <sighs> snappy detent with the thumb flick excuse me, middle finger flick with the flipper, with even the slow roll, then you have a nice, very smooth close. Um, as for blade play, maybe just like the smallest little increment of blade play, but this thing is pretty locked up tight. And I have fidgeted with this knife a ton since I've had it in over the past three, four weeks, whatever it is. Um, so that's a good attestment to having, you know, a solid pivot. I know a lot of production knives come with kind of a looser pivot because I don't want to tighten it down and stuff like that. Um, especially because, you know, I think this did come from China somewhere. So it did, you know, was on a on a boat or on a plane for quite a while. Um, and I know that has a little bit to do with, you know, pivots being loose and whatnot. But uh, overall, action is good. No complaints at all. And that is leading me to my next category of ergos. Now with a three inch blade and a four inch handle, I can still get all four fingers on my on this knife um, and not feel crowded. I, I'm a little bit cramped, but not so much crowded. Um, you know, you do have a nice natural restriction point here with the flipper tab. Index finger goes here. Rest of your hands follow suit, and it's just a nice simple, simple, simple design. Straight across the top here. Straight across. Well, not so much straight across the bottom. I guess you do have a little bit of a curvature and then a little bit of a curvature, but it's pretty straight. It's definitely, you know very very simple very you know clean design um, but i can get all four fingers on here nice and easy the pot clip is milled so it's not sitting you know super super proud of the knife you do have a little bit of a kind of a uh, ledge there i guess you can you use to catch on your pocket um, but you're not really feeling that too much in the hot spot department uh, and then you can choke up as well with the slipper choil so Middle finger goes here on the first groove, next two fingers follow suit, and then my pointer finger wraps around. And that gets me even more off of the hot spot area of the pot clip. And again, that's not a hot spot even really much to begin with. Can you feel it? Sure, but you know, it's not really much of an issue unless you were just like 
on a death grip with it, then you might feel a little bit more. Um, but overall, not really much to write home about. Um, and the way the blade is shaped, it's a very usable blade. So this thing is great for push cuts. When you're choked up like this, you can do some real nice precise cutting in and around different things. Um, as long as you are careful what you're doing, you know, you don't want to slide your finger on the blade. Um, it's very comfortable. Hammer grip, very comfortable. Saber grip, very comfortable. You don't have any jimping up top there, which is interesting. Um, I'm a, kind of a guy that can take jimping or I can leave jimping. I'm kind of indifferent on it. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Uh, so I think this knife not having jimping up top is fine. It kind of suits it the way it's sort of a sleek and sort of sophisticated looking knife. Um, it kind of knows how to party with the uh, wild toxic storm fat carbon it has on here. Um, but yeah, there's no sharp edges. It's all nicely rounded and contoured. The titanium has a nice feel to it. The fat carbon, you know, feels like fat carbon. It's kind of slick, but not slick enough to like cause an issue with, you know, holding the knife. Um, one thing I do want to touch base on is the inlays are not flush. They are proud of the knife. You guys can see right there by the uh, bolster lock. Now that doesn't bother me at all. I definitely, you know, I can appreciate when knives have inlays that are nice and seamless and you cannot tell at all. Um, but I can also appreciate kind of like the rawness of having inlays that are proud. And that just kind of, I guess to me is another sort of hearkening back to traditionals, which is, you know, another sort of tie in with the shield and with the lines on both sides. Um, at least to me, it's kind of my thought process with it. That's where I feel like a lot of raised inlay knives kind of stemmed from or kind of came from was traditionals and, and older style knives like that. So I really like how they, <coughs> excuse me, how they decided to keep the same vein and go with the raised inlays on the, um, and you really like, you can't tell from an ergo department, you just see it visually. And when you're on your finger over it, you can feel it. But again, when you're holding it like this, you can't tell if it's a seamless flush inlay or a raised inlay like this. So I just want to touch base on it and let you guys know that that's how they are because some of you you know really picky about that and i just wanted that to be you know uh, presented to you for uh you know future knowledge and stuff like that but that leads me to my next category of carry and the weight on this is only 3.3 ounces so it's a very nice and lightweight blade when you're considering you're getting titanium and fat carbon awesome um this loop over oh, sorry not a loop over style deep carry pocket pocket clip but is a milled titanium pocket clip it goes to about this far in your pocket, um, so you have about that much sticking up out. It doesn't really bother me a ton. Um, I've carried this with my bird dog shorts, which is nice because I have like a back side sort of wallet pocket that I only open the zipper up a little way, and it is perfect for dropping a knife in. It kind of sits on my hip. Um, I've carried that with carried this with those shorts quite a bit. I've also carried it with um, gym shorts quite a bit, quite a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, just around the house, and uh, can't really tell at all if it's in the pocket. Nice and lightweight, nice overall size. You guys know I am a huge fan of smaller knives, which is kind of kind of weird, I guess, to think about because I'm a I'm a bigger guy, I'm like 6'4, got you know decent sized hands. Um, you think I would like larger knives, but nope, I like my small and slim and petite knives. And I definitely think that this is very much adequate in that department with it only being, you know, three uh three inch blade, about seven inches overall, nice, small, compact. Uh, good good weight, 3.3 ounces. Now you do have a flipper tab, so if you have it down in your pocket and you have to go in your pocket for change, chapstick, medicine, anything like that that might be floating underneath the knife in your pocket, you do have a little bit of a risk if you, Sophie, it's okay. You do have a little bit of a risk if you put, you know, have your hand down in there and you go to pull it up out and you, you know, you could catch the jimping on it a little bit, but it's not super aggressive jimping at all. Um, so odds are you're just going to hit it and then bounce right off of it. But I like to know, or I like to make you guys aware of that. And that's just kind of a little segment I always do with my videos and uh, talk about, you know, whether or not the knife can pop up out. Cause some knives with, with flipper tabs have super, super aggressive jimping, but this one really doesn't, um, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, overall carry is nice. Would be nice if they would have added a lefty filler tab for the pot clip, but not the end of the world, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my my take on the uh, carry department. So that leads me to my final category of price point and what I recommend this knife. So price point on the Tuya Mutt is $249. And I think that that is a very, very good price, especially when you consider 
the materials you're getting and Sophie, the materials you're getting and the, um, you know, the, the amount of amount of knives nowadays that have materials in, you know, similar to this for 50 to a hundred dollars more. Um, I think Tuya has really been killing the pricing game recently. A lot of their models come under $300 and you're getting fat carbon, S90V, titanium, multiple, multiple deployment methods, um, great ergos, just really good quality control, really good builds. And uh, the Mutt is, you know, the next in line for having a fantastic price. And I think 250 is, is really, really good. I really, I really expected this to be closer to 300. Um, so when I saw that final price come in, I was really kind of shocked um, just because of, you know, fat carbon is not cheap. <clears throat> Excuse me, I ran out of water. I don't feel like getting up and getting any while well, I just want to finish this video. Um, but fat carbon is not cheap. Titanium is not cheap. S90V is, you know, a high quality steel. Um, so I think all together, the fit and finish on this knife, materials, ergos, action, carry, everything just kind of combines together for a very, very premium knife, a very, very premium EDC knife. Um, and I, I really think that this is a fantastic addition to anyone's collection. I'm super glad I have it in. Uh, again, this was sent to me by Dave over at Two Your Knives USA or Two Your Knives US uh, to check out. And uh, Dave, if you're watching this, I really do appreciate it. I have loved every minute of carrying this and I'm going to love every every of the next 400,000 minutes of carrying this just because it's really that awesome. You know, and Colin, um, you have come out with a lot of designs that I have liked. And to me, the way the blade shape is, um, it kind of reminds me of I think it's the, I know it's the Royal, the Kubi Royal, which was the first rendition that I ever got experience to with Collins Knives. And he also has a um, another Kubi with a little bit shorter and stouter of a blade, but the hole is just kind of really reminding me of it. And else it's also a flipper. So it's just, I can see Collins design language sort of speaking through the knife to me. And uh, I think him and Dave combined on a really, really good knife and a really, really good product at a really, really good price point. So I would highly recommend it. They are all still in stock on tuyanives.com. Um, I will leave you a link down below if you guys are interested. Please go check them out. Um, I don't think you're gonna regret it if you pick one of these up. And I'll also try to leave a link down below if I remember to Tuya Knives website, or the website, <clears throat> excuse me, to their Instagram page. If you guys are interested in following Dave on there and keeping up to date with his new, um, new models, new runs, whatever it may be, he does post on there, so. But yeah, I'm going to wrap this up now. I feel like I've gotten my point across to you guys enough. I feel like you guys have a good, strong idea of my thoughts on this knife, and I love it. So leave a comment down below. What are your guys' thoughts on the the Mutt and Tuya knives in general? Personally, I think they're really, really good. I think their OEM bark is awesome. I think their fit and finish and their quality control is great. And I love a lot of their designs. So I think they're, they're really coming on strong in the knife world, and I think they're going to be around to stay for quite a while. So... Uh, but I'm going to wrap this up now. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.